This is a tiny tale of love in a faraway land, about a kingdom surrounded by a deep, dark forest that was filled with beasts and ruled by a powerful witch. Because of this, humans rarely ventured inside. However, as terrible as the forest was, a beautiful singing voice would always pierce the darkness when the moon shone. The voice belonged to a large wolf, and she would proudly sing toward the moon, high atop the cliff, every night. The wolf singing drew in an unforeseen admirer, a human prince from the kingdom. Every night, the prince would venture into the scary forest just to hear the beautiful singing. One night, when the wolf finished singing, the prince applauded. However, due to the cliff, it would shroud the singer's identity, which only piqued the prince's curiosity. From atop the cliff, the wolf glanced from up high at the prince and thought how stupid the prince was, making himself easy prey. And the wolf thought that she would eat him now that she finished singing. However, the prince had innocently applauded the wolf, which she had never been praised for her singing. She hesitated at first, but she soon grew fond of it and didn't feel like eating him. For several more nights, the wolf sang her song, always looking forward to the prince's applause. The wolf thought that if the prince were to find out that she was a monster, that he would be too scared to ever come back again to hear her sing. So every night after her song, the wolf would wait for the prince's applause, then retreat back into the deep, dark forest. This continued for a while, but on a night like any other, the wolf sang her song as she always had before. However, tonight was special, since this was the night the prince entered the forest filled with determination. He wanted to see the identity of the singer with his own eyes, so the prince climbed the cliff. The wolf didn't notice anything unusual at first, but when she was done singing, she waited for the prince's applause, but didn't hear anything. She wondered and glanced down below. She was surprised to see the prince coming closer to her. The wolf panicked, thinking that he'll hate her if he sees what she truly looks like. She extended a large paw to cover the prince's eyes, but instead, her claws accidentally tore at the prince's eyes. The wounded prince slipped from the cliff. The startled wolf rushed to grab the prince's arm, thinking that he wouldn't survive the fall. At the same time, the terrified prince felt the same beastly presence on his arm as the one that had just scratched out his eyes, which only increased his dread. The prince screamed and struggled desperately to escape the wolf's grip. All of his yells startled the wolf, which led her to accidentally let his arms slip through her grasp. The prince plummeted down the cliff. Luckily, he landed safely in some bushes. Though he was not harmed from the fall, his eyes were far from fine. The soldier had heard his scream and had come to see the commotion. Seeing the damage on the prince's face, he knew that a monster must have injured the prince, so the soldier quickly fired his arrows. The wolf was concerned about the prince, but after being barraged by arrows, she was forced to escape back into the forest. The wounded prince began to gradually lose consciousness, now scarred with the terrible memory of claws in his eyes and the beast's grip on his arms. Several nights later, the prince, now blind, had brought shame and disappointment to the royal family, and as punishment, he was locked away in the castle tower. The wolf was concerned about the prince and overheard some soldiers in the castle say that he had been locked away. She became angry at the thought of the prince locked within a cell, so she snuck into the tower to check on him. The wolf came across a cold cell and saw the distressed prince inside. The prince sensed that someone was nearby. A large cloth wrapped around his eyes, as if to hide something shameful. The prince was able to recognize the voice as the singer from the forest. The wolf couldn't believe he recognized her just by her voice. The wolf responded, confirming her identity. The prince informs the singer that he was attacked by a monster in the forest, and he is glad to know that the singer was not also attacked. The prince smiled a bit with relief. The wolf felt her chest ache when she looked at his ragged figure. While happy for the visitation, the prince wondered how they knew of his whereabouts. The wolf didn't know how to respond to the question, so she lied, since the prince couldn't see her. She told him that she was a princess from a nearby kingdom, and that she wanted to visit the injured prince, so she was permitted entrance. But besides the point, she couldn't believe that they would lock him away. The prince tells her that his recklessness for wandering in the forest and his disfigurement would bring shame to the kingdom, and so he isn't allowed to show his face in public ever again, his head hanging sadly. She comes up with an idea. She suggests they visit the witch in the forest to heal his eyes. The prince looked dumbfounded upon hearing her idea. 
The prince isn't sure what the princess is talking about, and asks if it's the same witch from the storybook. Unfamiliar with the storybook in question, she knows of a witch that grants wishes, who lives deep in the forest, and she offers to take him there. The wolf was excited at the prospect, however, the prince's head continued hanging sadly. The prince isn't optimistic about the idea, and believes the monster that hurt him is still out there, haunting him since he can still feel its claws on him. The prince can't continue, his shoulders begin to tremble. The wolf dropped her gaze after hearing his words. She looked down at her paws. All she saw were sharp claws that were made for hunting others. She desperately wanted to cure the prince, but she couldn't even hold his hand and guide him with her monstrous claws. Determined, she clasped her paws and quietly stepped closer to the prince. She tells him that she will take him into the forest, but he will need to wait a little bit longer and that she will return later. She then fled the castle tower and ran into the forest. She ran all night through the forest and the sun was just rising. As she arrived at the witch's house, the witch of the forest turned her gaze to the sudden visitor, surprised to see the wolf travel all the way to her house and ask what this sudden visit is all about. The wolf proclaims that she wishes to become a human and that she has someone that wants to see her. The witch lets out a hearty laugh. The thought of a man-eating wolf becoming a human amused her. She begins to ask why, but also doesn't care enough to know the reason, since she might already have an idea. The wolf growled at the witch's mockery. The witch prodded the wolf's nose, the latter looking ready to bite at any moment. The witch accepts and says that she will grant her wish. The witch asks the wolf if she knows what she needs in return for a wish. Out of nowhere, strange glowing spheres appear. The witch plucked one towards her, admiring it. The sphere's vivid glow pulsed in the witch's palm, each one unique and beautiful like gems. The witch was a collector with a crude temperament. In return for granting wishes, she took the requester's most cherished possession and turned them into crystals. The witch mentions how the most beautiful hearts are the ones willing to lose what's important to them in order to get what they want, and wonders what the wolf's heart would reveal. The witch peered into the wolf's eyes as if to discern a suitable payment. She sees it and tells her that her payment will be her singing voice. The wolf knew that the witch had a wicked streak, and she knew she had to sacrifice the most important thing to her. Still, her heart trembled, doubtful. Her beautiful singing voice that the prince praised, or the chance to hold his hand. The wolf agrees, telling the witch that she may have her voice. The witch's mouth curled, as if giving an evil grin. With that, the payment has been accepted. The witch did not expect someone as prideful as the wolf to give up her singing voice so easily, but sometimes, life is full of surprises. In a good mood, the witch decides to give a little something extra. The witch's eyes twinkle dubiously, as she will let the wolf decide whatever form that she desires. The wolf earnestly tells her that she wants to look like a princess. The witch chuckled softly at the wolf's choice. The witch thinks it's a lovely idea. However, she questions if it is the best idea. After all, two humans wandering the forest together will make for easy prey for monsters. They will be devoured before getting close to the witch's house. The wolf was unnerved and hung her head, ashamed that the witch had seen how futile her plan was. Noticing how little thought went into the plan, and bluntly states how even clever wolves can be dull sometimes. So the witch decides to modify the spell for her, so she may return to her wolf form at any time. A magical light appeared as she began the ritual. The magical light wrapped around the wolf's body, a part of the light gathered near the witch. At this point, the witch is able to snatch the wolf's singing voice as payment for her new ability. The light around the wolf suddenly shone bright, and then faded. The wolf doesn't see any change in her appearance, to which she then begins to look sad and disappointed. But the witch consoles her, telling her that the spell is complex, and that her body will need rest for one night before she may notice any changes. With her task complete, the wolf departed the house. However, before leaving, the witch stops her, forgetting to give one more important detail, that she must avoid moonlight. If she were to ever fall under it, she would immediately turn back into a wolf. The wolf leaves the house happy as can be, for soon she will be able to hold the prince's hand, leaving the witch's house now full of hope. The wolf eagerly anticipated returning to the castle tower, where the prince was waiting. Now arriving back at the castle tower, she recalls the witch's words about turning into a princess. It had already been one night. The prince was in sight, so the wolf focused on transforming into the princess. Now, as a princess, 
She arrives at the prince's cell and calls out to the prince. The prince perks up and is happy the princess has arrived. The two of them pressed up against the bars towards one another. She tells him not to worry, but she has worked hard and will be able to free him from his cell. Attempting to ease the prince, she looks at the cell door and thinks that she can break it open as a wolf. But the prince would need to get away from them first. So she asks if he could step away from the bars for just one second. Confused, he agrees and backs away from the door. The wolf breaks the bar doors. The princess timidly grasps the prince's tiny warm hand. Although he was scared, he weakly grasped hers back. Feeling immense joy, she thinks about how she gave up her singing voice just to become a human, and she is glad and doesn't regret it. She tells him that they are going to the witch's house in the forest, and instructs him to stay as close to her as he can. They enter the deadly forest to travel to the witch's house to heal the prince. And so, their journey finally begins. They talk to each other during their journey. She mentions that she enjoyed running around and he confided that he liked reading. He especially loved books about flowers. He wasn't allowed to leave the castle that often, so he thought it'd be nice to finally see some flowers in the outside world. While they were traveling, there was a rustling sound nearby. A small monster appeared from the bushes and leapt towards the prince. The princess quickly transformed into the wolf and brushed the monster away, allowing the prince's head to barely escape being bitten by the monster. Everything happened so fast, and for the prince, he could not see what was going on. He crouched down on the spot, shaking in fear. He couldn't help it. He'd recently had a scary experience in the forest. The wolf panicked, thinking she needed to do something, but she had no idea what to do for the frightened prince. She desperately glanced around, and a beautiful flower field caught her eye. She looked at it and remembered what the prince had said, so she decided to get him a flower. Handing the prince a flower, the prince was surprised by it, saying how nice it smelled. She remembered how he loved to read books about flowers. The prince smiled at the princess's words. He thanked her and wondered what kind of flower it was. He wasn't able to see it, but that made him more excited to see it once his eyes were healed. She was relieved to see him happier. The prince wanted some way to thank her, and thought maybe that she would like to hear a story that he read all the time. The princess didn't expect the prince to be so happy. She decided that she would pick him more flowers if she ever were to come across any more flower fields. They walked for what seemed like an eternity, and didn't notice how dark it had already gotten. Both of them were exhausted from the dangers of the forest. Just as their bellies began to rumble, they found a place they could rest. They decided to rest for a bit, and she started preparing dinner. The princess takes out some meat and presents it to the prince. It's her favorite food. She then offered the bloody meat to the prince, thinking that he'll like it just as much as she does. The prince takes the meat and puts it in his mouth. He then tilts his head in confusion. The meat tastes quite odd for the prince. It is then that the princess mentions that it is fresh rabbit meat and hopes he finds it delicious. He realizes that he just ate raw meat and begins throwing up the food. The princess, who thought he would enjoy it, looked at him with a blank expression on her face. The prince apologizes, saying that they don't eat raw meat at the castle. The princess felt bad for the prince. Curious, the princess asks how they eat meat. So the prince tells her that they cook it first using fire, otherwise they would get sick if they ate it raw. The princess froze at the word fire. She was afraid of it and became tense just from thinking about it. She goes off to rummage for some fruit instead, and with that, the princess managed to avoid further discussion of fire with the prince. Darkness fell, and the witch's house was still relatively far away. They began searching for a place to spend the night. After wandering for a bit, they found an unstable cabin that was covered from top to bottom with mushrooms. Feeling anxious, the princess suggests that they stay at the cabin for just one night. They firmly held hands and entered the cabin. The inside of the cabin was even darker than the forest. Only a few blurred shadows were visible. The princess squinted her eyes to see what they were. She points out what appears to be corpses on the floor. She then realized that the shadowy figures were dead goats. The prince was stunned at the thought of corpses. Not eating much prior, the princess transforms back into her wolf form to chow down on the goats and suggests eating them for dinner. The prince, believing the corpses were human, was taken aback by the princess's outrageous suggestion. The princess left the prince to his own confusion and decided to try and sample one of the goats. Just as the wolf's large fangs were about to sink into the goat, it let out a weak cry. The prince had heard the groan, so he urgently let the princess know that the corpses were still alive. The wolf reluctantly stopped trying to eat the goats. Nature's law dictates that the weak will be eaten. 
She stared at the prince, disappointed, thinking she can't do anything to them while he thinks that they are humans and not monsters. The prince called out to the goats and listened to their story. He tells the princess that these people are starving and can't fend for themselves, so he suggests that they help them. The wolf wanted to be closer to the prince, so she begrudgingly agreed, so they set out to find food for the goats. After returning to the cabin with a lot of meat, she gives it to the goats. The prince quickly intervenes, telling the princess that they cannot serve raw meat to humans. However, goats are monsters, so they love raw meat. But the prince still thought that they were humans. The princess decided to play along with the story so as not to scare the prince by telling him that they were really monsters and not humans. Attempting to avoid an awkward situation, the princess asks the prince to teach her how to cook meat. The princess tried to follow the prince's instructions to light the fire, but she became too scared and tossed the lantern away from her. She began to cry and asked the prince for help. The prince wasn't confident that he could make a fire because of his blindness, but he was happy that she had asked him for help, so he agreed. The prince summoned a little courage for the princess. Returning back to the hut, they offered the meat to the goats, and the goats were utterly delighted and immediately ate all of it. The goats thanked the prince and the princess for saving them from dying of starvation. Taking this opportunity, the princess asks if her and the prince may stay in their house for the night. The goat tells them that they can stay, although their place has been overrun with mushrooms. The long day finally came to a close. The prince was exhausted and dozed off, but the nocturnal wolf could not sleep. The restless wolf wandered outside the cabin and found one of the goats chasing a rabbit. The rabbit was able to avoid being caught by the goat. The goat notices the wolf and mentions how hunting is hard, but praises the wolf since they were able to bring back meat in such a short period of time. The wolf shrugged off the compliment. She was worried the prince would overhear the goat calling her a wolf. When she tried to cut the conversation short, the goat asks if the prince is the wolf's emergency rations. This comment startles the wolf. They go to applaud the wolf's idea, and they too begin to think how it would be easier for them to do the same so they don't fall into starvation again. But they would probably pick a human that wasn't so small, as that would barely pass as a midnight snack. Normally the wolf would engage in this banter, as eating humans was common amongst monsters. But now that she was traveling with the prince, she became alarmed at the goat's words. The wolf inadvertently denies the claim. The goat didn't let her blunder go unnoticed. He thinks that maybe the wolf is trying to get along with the human. The wolf knew the goat knew the truth, but she refused to admit it and kept quiet. The goat brings up how it's impossible for monsters and humans to get along, and it sounded as if she couldn't be friends with the prince. The wolf opened her mouth to speak, but no words came out. They bring up how monsters eat humans, and humans kill monsters. How it's one big vicious cycle. The wolf hung her head as the goat continued. Before returning to the cabin, the goat assures the wolf that while no good may come from it, for saving their lives, they will support their decision. The wolf curled up and tried to sleep as the goat's words replayed endlessly in her head. She felt uneasy. Up until then, she had just been happy to hold the prince's hand as a princess, believing there was nothing to fear. But her true form was a monster that the prince hated, and that he still didn't know that she was the one who blinded him. And if he ever found out, the wolf told herself it'll all be okay, and that she just needs to keep it up for just a little bit longer. However, she couldn't get any sleep that night. The next morning, the princess and the prince left the cabin to assume their journey to the witch's house. The goats thanked them again and prayed for their safe travels. The goat she had talked to last night wished them luck and jokingly told the princess not to accidentally eat the prince. The prince didn't understand what he meant, but she did. Needing to calm her anxious heart, she pulled the prince's hand and set off again. At dusk, they found a lake in the middle of the forest. The scarlet sunset reflected on the lake's surface. The area appeared safe, so they decided to stay there for the night. After dinner, they spent some more time talking. The princess asked the prince if he liked to read a lot of books, to which he responded, saying that he did, but also he liked books with games that can be played with other people. This piqued the princess's curiosity, and she wanted to know what those were like, since she was used to playing alone. The prince was delighted that she was interested, so he happily explained one of the game's rules. Now knowing the rules, the princess was up for playing around with the prince. The prince wanted to make the game a little bit more interesting with the wager. The loser would have to grant a wish for the winner. The princess was confident that she wasn't going to lose and agreed to the bet. After the game ends, the princess clenched her teeth, blinking back tears from utter defeat. Now, not so confident, she knows how skilled the prince was with his vast vocabulary. The prince couldn't help but have a grin on his face. After all, he has read a lot of books. 
He then reminds the princess of the bet that now she will have to fulfill a wish for him. The princess was still upset after losing, but she regained her composure and waited for the prince to speak. Shyly, the prince requested that he wanted to hear the princess sing. Taken aback at the request, she couldn't grant his wish. After all, her singing voice, which the prince had come to hear every night, had been given to the witch in exchange for turning her into a princess. She hadn't sung once since they started traveling together. It was hard to imagine what her voice was like now. He tells her how much he loved her singing voice, which only made her feel more pressured. She needed to do something fast, otherwise the prince might not be able to trust her anymore. The princess nervously cleared her throat, opened her mouth, and started to sing. But her voice was nothing like her old one. In fact, it was horrible. The prince had a blank expression on his face. She sounded completely different from what he remembered. The princess started coughing, embarrassed. She apologizes and mentions how exhausted she is from all of their traveling, telling him that she will sing for him later once she has rested. The prince begins to feel awful, forcing her to sing when she doesn't have the strength. He apologizes, saying that they should go to bed early. The prince's gentle words cut into the princess, who felt guilty for lying about her voice. Dawn arrived. The prince was in a deep slumber. The wolf remained unable to sleep. She slowly walked around the lake, her head buzzing with anxiety. Again, the goat's words replayed endlessly in her mind, how it's impossible for monsters and humans to get along. The wolf thinking that she will need to remain in her princess form, but to stay in that form would mean that she would always be lying to him. She felt conflicted about her feelings for the prince and her constant lies. The wolf prodded the lake's surface as if to erase her uneasiness. The water slowly rippled. The wolf glanced at it and saw her monstrous reflection. She heaved a big sigh and prodded the lake's surface once more. Later in their journey, while she retrieves a flower, the princess hesitates, lost in thought. She was holding a flower that she had just picked for the prince. The princess nodded with resolve and transformed gently to avoid crushing the flower. She was attempting to give the flower to the prince in her true form. Her fingers trembled with anxiety. But in the end, she never gave him the flower as the wolf. It's as if the flower seemed to be telling her that her beastly self would never be good enough for him, and that she would always be a monster who only knew how to hurt others. The prince was sensing that something was off, so he asks if everything was all right with the princess. The wolf was startled to hear the prince's voice. She sighed sadly and transformed back into the princess. The princess wistfully smiled as she gave the flower to the prince, telling him that everything was all right. The prince's usual happy smile filled her with pain that day. While leading the prince through a dark cave, despite her best efforts to carefully guide him, the ground that he was standing on had collapsed. Shouting for the prince, the princess seized his hand, but she could not lift him up in her current form. She could rescue him easily in her wolf form, but if her hand still holding his turned into the wolf's, he would know that she was a monster. She desperately tried to pull him up, her entire body shaking. Unfortunately, she couldn't do it any longer. She ran out of energy and unwillingly let go of his hand. She looked where he had fallen and saw him lying in a small, shallow hole. Her mind went blank and heart filled with dread, but the prince soon set up and waved. He was perfectly fine. The ground that had given way was hollow, so the prince didn't suffer any injuries. The princess felt relieved. But the princess looked at her hand, a feeble and tiny hand that couldn't help the prince. She began to feel uneasy about keeping him safe in the future. While traversing through the cave, they came across a strange area filled with many holes, which looked like gaping mouths in the darkness. Thinking that there might be something dangerous in the holes, the princess wanted to protect the prince, so she stood in front of one of the holes and peered inside of it. Suddenly, Tons of small black creatures emerged from the holes. The princess and the prince soon found themselves completely surrounded. The prince, sensing the princess's alarm, seized her hand and braced himself. The princess instructs the prince to stay where he was while she prepared to fend off the creatures. But the creatures only twitched their nostrils with curiosity. Unsure if they were of any threat, the princess turned her back away. But just as soon as she did, the creature next to the prince opened its wide mouth. The princess jumped at the creature and pushed it back, sending it flying into the rock wall. The creature, now with a lump on its head, began to cry. It was able to smell the scent of the flowers on the prince, which only made it hungry. The creature only wanted to eat the prince's flower and not the prince himself. 
The prince tried approaching the crying creature, but the princess thought this was unwise and offered to do it herself, not wanting him to know that the creatures were monsters. The creatures quietly told her that they were moles who lacked sight, but had an excellent sense of smell and loved the smell of flowers. They tell them that the flowers don't bloom in the cave, but sometimes the wind carries in flower petals. They love flowers, but since they are so scarce, they fight over them when they come in. Sadly, some moles have died as a result. Leaving out the part that the moles were creatures, the princess relays the story to the prince. The prince wanted to share the flower with them, but it was far too important to him to give away. This made the moles very sad, to which the moles began to make a high-pitched squeal with their noses. The prince suggested that they gather flowers for them, and the princess agreed. So, the mole stopped crying and became excited. Following the petals, riding on the wind, the two of them set to find another flower field. Upon arriving at the flower field, the princess gasped. Flowers of every color were blooming, made even more radiant by the setting sun. It was the most beautiful sight that she had ever laid her eyes on. Never has the princess seen such a beautiful field, and the prince says how wonderful it smells and wishes that he could see it. The princess closed her eyes for a moment and took it all in, wishing that she could show the prince. They gathered a lot of flowers and went back to the cave. The moles were ecstatic at the flowers that both the prince and princess brought them. They all began to jump and run around the two, clamoring for flowers. The princess began handing out flowers to each mole one at a time, but one was more anxious and couldn't wait any longer. One of the moles opened its wide mouth and loudly sank its teeth into the flowers that the princess was holding. The princess was taken aback, but the mole didn't care and started chewing on the flowers. It was just too tempting to wait. The moles, who had already received their flowers, began consuming them in earnest. Happy humming could be heard all throughout the cave. The prince was off to the side, telling one of the moles about the location of the flower field. The moles thanked them and offered for them to stay just a little bit longer. Then, the moles brought out some food for the princess and the prince, who were extremely grateful. That night, the princess and the prince returned to the flower field. The princess wanted to give a special flower to the prince. The prince helped illuminate the field using the lantern. The moonlight could occasionally be seen peeking from behind the clouds. As the princess gave the best flower to the prince, she took his hand and he shyly squeezed hers in return. The princess felt warmth from the prince's hand and immediately forgot about all of her troubles. She wished to keep things like this forever. However, for a moment, the princess completely let her guard down. The moonlight appeared from the clouds. It shone on them briefly, but that was all that was needed for the princess's hand, still holding on to the prince, to change into the wolf's. A shivering feeling coursed through the prince's hand. It was the feeling of a monster that had both slashed the prince's eyes and gripped his arms. He tried not to cry out in fear, but why? Why had her hand changed into the monster's? The prince couldn't believe it. Could, could she be? The princess, she's the monster? He scrambled away from her. She tried her hardest to explain to the prince, but her words fell on deaf ears. He moved further and further away to keep his distance. Unknowingly, the prince had moved closer to the edge of the cliff. Leaping toward the prince to prevent him from falling, the princess was able to grab his hand just before he fell. The lantern he was holding slid out from his grasp and tumbled down the cliff. She told the prince to give her his other hand, otherwise he will surely fall. However, the prince hung his head and didn't move. The prince opened his mouth and asked the princess if she has been lying to him. Attempting to lower the tension of the situation, she tries to skirt around the topic and tries to pull him back up to safety, but she was too weak to lift him. The prince comes right out and asks the princess if she is really a monster. Stuttering, she tries to deny it and comes up with excuses like how it must all be his imagination or how maybe he got confused when she gave him the flower. The princess still felt guilty about lying to him, but she couldn't risk him knowing that she was really the monster that had blinded him. Again, she pleads for him to use both of his hands to clasp onto hers, but he did nothing and continued to hang his head. Misfortune then struck. The clouds hiding the moon vanished, bathing the two in pure moonlight. The spell was broken on the princess. Now fully exposed, she had no excuses. Her beastly paw now holding his hand, and the prince could feel it. His suspicions were confirmed. Stammering, he asks her why she had lied to him, but the wolf couldn't think of anything to defend herself. Still in shock, the prince couldn't muster the strength to express himself, and the princess left wondering what he was trying to say. He shouts at her, calling her a liar. 
demanding that she let go of his hand and that she is a monster. The wolf's eyes welled up with tears. His words had cut deeply into her. She could barely breathe. Nothing had ever cost her so much pain before. Inadvertently, the wolf loosened her grip and the prince swung his hands free. All she could do was stare at him falling down the cliff. The wolf kept staring at the spot where he had fallen, her mind completely blank. After what seemed like an eternity, a red light shone in the dark forest. Soon, the forest turned crimson. The fire from the fallen lantern was burning the forest. The wolf snapped out of her revere when she heard trees burning. The realization that the prince is in danger and she knew that she needed to help him. Flames engulfed more trees and rapidly spread. The wolf instinctively wanted to run away. Her body trembled. She hated fire more than anything, but couldn't let the prince die in the burning inferno. She shouted out for him. Summoning all of her courage, the wolf leapt into the burning forest. After desperately searching the forest, the wolf finally found the prince, surrounded by fiery trees. He fearfully cried out for help. The wolf carefully approached the prince and destroyed the rubble on top of him. Nervously, she told the prince that she had came to help. The prince couldn't believe that she would still try to help him after how he acted towards her. He didn't know how to respond. She was the one who had destroyed his eyes, yet she had overcome her fear of fire to save his life. Neither of them said anything. They could only stand near each other as the forest burned around them. Soon, they heard a ferocious roar from far away. The burning trees fell and shook the entire forest. They looked to where the roar had come from, and in the distance, they see a giant monster towering over the trees as it roars again. The roar filled with the utmost fury. Neither the wolf nor the prince had heard such a frightening monster before. There was commotion around them. Lots of living creatures scurried and hurried away from the monster. These were items from the witch's collection that were shouting in panicked voices. The witch's creatures fled, yelling how furious that she was, how her collection was destroyed, and how she's on a rampage, and that the forest will be reduced to ashes, just like last time. The wolf and the prince turned to each other, the prince realizing that this is all his fault, that all of her things are gone. The wolf tries to think, but doesn't know how they're going to stop the witch. It wouldn't be easy to triumph over such a terrible monster. She considered taking the prince and running away, but the prince suggests that they need to go and apologize to the witch, which only shocks the wolf. She isn't quite sure, but the prince tells her that if you do bad things, you have to apologize. She repeats the sentiment, and the prince tries to reassure her. The wolf hesitates, but nods and agrees with the plan. Collecting all of the flowers in each level and delivering it to the prince will unlock the story of the witch. A long time ago, there was a witch who ruled a kingdom surrounded by a forest. She performed magic to grant people's wishes, and they treated her like a god. However, to grant their wishes, she would request the payment of the wisher's life. Even so, people would seek her out for her miracles. Once, a mother came pleading for her daughter's fatal incurable disease to be cured and gave up her life in return. The witch granted her request, but she did not take her life immediately and allowed them to return home. The mother embraced her now cured daughter and cried with joy. The mother said how nice it would be if she were to continue living with her daughter. But then, that was when the witch took the mother's life. Later, a worried man came to the witch, telling her that his entire village was suffering from a drought, so he asked her to make it rain in exchange for his life. The witch granted his wish, and he returned to the village, and as soon as he arrived, it began to rain. He shouted with glee as one of the villagers ran up to him. She was his childhood friend and his betrothed. They shared joy in the rain. The villagers were saying how now they can hold their wedding, unaware that it was because of his sacrifice. This cycle of granting wishes and taking lives went on and on, which only made the witch grow weary of repeating the same task every day. She even grew tired of the humans who blindly sacrificed their deprived lives for wishes. But the cruel, fickle witch found a way to escape boredom by delaying payment of the requester's life. One day, a girl visited the witch and made a request. She simply wanted to apologize to her brother, a wish hardly worth taking a life over. Unlike every time before, the witch spoke up, asking the girl if that pitiful request was her wish, and just told her to go apologize to him and not waste her time. But the girl tells the witch that she cannot since her brother isn't alive anymore, which then causes the girl to begin to uncontrollably sob. Not long ago, a girl who had lost both of her parents lived with her older brother. 
the two had gotten into a fight over insignificant things. She eventually ran away from home and was later attacked by a beast in the forest where she had fled to. The witch remembered a request that she once had from a boy. He asked the witch to save his sister, who had been torn apart and was on the verge of death, and that witch fulfilled that wish. However, the witch's magic cannot bring back those who are already dead, but lives that were taken were imbued into crystals. The witch summoned the brother's soul from within the crystal, which allowed her to talk to her brother once more. The girl apologized over getting angry at such stupid things. The witch couldn't understand why she would throw her life away for just an apology. The brother, who saved her life, couldn't even rest in peace. Afterward, the witch did not take the girl's life, but instead had her living with her. Even if she had taken her life, she would not have enjoyed it. The fickle witch was more interested in the girl. Over time, she would change her cruel nature, little by little. The witch even considered no longer taking lives as compensation for wishes. The girl became somewhat invaluable to the witch. However, not all stories end in happiness. For some humans held grudges over those who lost their lives as payment and took it out on the girl who lived with the witch. By killing her, once the witch returned and found out about the girl, she became furious and transformed into a gigantic monster. She went on a rampage all over the kingdom, reducing it all to ashes. Once her fury subsided and she returned to normal, the witch cast a spell on the girl's lifeless body, turning it into a crystal. She vanished into the depths of the forest, with the crystal who was once the most important person to her. No one knew what happened to the witch after the events. Rumors swell about a witch living at the edge of the forest who grants wishes in exchange for something they hold dear. No one knows if it's the same witch, but that is the witch's tale. The prince and the princess finally arrive at the witch's house, or so they thought. Had she destroyed her own home, it was now an unrecognizable pile of rubble. They spotted the angry witch further ahead, who was still rampaging through the forest in her monstrous form. The princess asked nervously what they should do, since it seems that she is in a blind rage and doesn't think that she is going to listen to them. But the prince reassures her that it'll all be alright, but the princess looks at him and still isn't sure. The prince tells her that she is very strong. She still doesn't understand and thinks, was he being serious or was he joking? Which only caused her to feel a little bit more panicked. A livid roar and the shaking ground halted their conversation. The witch recognized the two and furiously advanced on them. She knew that they were the ones responsible for destroying the forest and her collection. Afraid of the approaching witch, the princess tried to run away with the prince, but he did not move. The prince believes maybe the witch will listen once they calm her down. The princess asks how they are going to do that, to which the prince suggests that maybe if they can knock her out. This comment takes the princess aback, a task that sounds easier said than done. But again, the prince suggests that the princess can knock her out. A little scared and unsure, the princess goes and gives it a shot, and transforms into the wolf and starts running towards the frenzied witch. The witch summons pillars of vines to try and attack the wolf, but with the prince's help, the wolf is able to land a strike on the witch, which only irritates her, and they are able to move further away from her. Upon approaching the witch again, the witch is able to use her power, transform the wolf, trapping her in her human form, while still summoning vines to strike both the prince and the princess. But turning the witch's power against her, they are able to use the vines to strike the witch, after managing to calm the witch down and return her to normal, the smoke from the battle cleared away. The witch appeared to have fainted, but she soon awoke and stood up, her knees weak. Exhausted, but still furious, the witch tells the two that they destroyed the most precious item to them and that she will never forgive them. Continuing to try and catch her breath, resumes telling them that they don't understand what they've done to her. She turns her hand toward them, magical power gathered in her palm, glowing darkly and ominously, just before that power was unleashed on the two. Both the prince and princess bow their heads and in unison tell the witch that they are sorry. Surprised by what she just witnessed, notice how honest they are being, but their honesty cannot be easily forgiven for what they have done. For some reason, there was no malice in her voice, despite it being there mere moments ago. The witch remembers the wolf had someone she wanted her to see and asks who it was. The princess nods, remembering why she had brought the prince to the witch in the first place. So she asks the witch to please heal the prince's eyes. The witch's face now with a distorted expression, a mixture of irritation and pleasure. 
thinking her request to be a little arrogant. After all, she burned down her forest and her collection and went to ask her to grant a wish. However, she was feeling generous and says that she will do it if the payment is of a reasonable compensation in a strange matronly tone. Feeling uneasy, the princess wasn't sure what to do. The witch reminds her of the reason she came here, which caused the princess to freeze in fear. She mentions the prince, but remembers the story of the witch and how she would take lives as payment, so she denies any fate on the prince. The witch chuckled and informs the wolf that she no longer takes lives as a requirement for payment, which made the princess feel slightly relieved. Thinking of what payment the wolf should pay for the prince's eyes, the witch believes her memories with the prince and the magic needed to become a princess will suffice. And of course, she will not be receiving her singing voice back. Under normal circumstances, it wouldn't cost so much to heal his eyes, but she would need to use extra magic to bring back the now destroyed forest. With the offer now out there, the witch asks if she will agree to the terms. After all the lies and selfishness for such a frail human to come to this very point, the princess reflected on her journey traveling with the prince. What she had done to him, she thought long and hard. Finally, she braced herself, determined, and accepts the witch's offer. The prince tried to stop her from accepting the witch's terms. The princess seizes the prince's hand, telling him how it'll all be okay. She was the one who hurt and lied to him. The least she could do was to heal him and make things right. But the prince understands now why she did all of it apologizing to the prince while she still can. She tells him she is sorry for everything she put him through. The prince tried to respond, but the witch interrupted them and began the ritual. The princess was caught in the magical light and the prince was blasted away. The witch moved her hands around and the princess immediately turned back into a wolf as she strips her transformation power away from her first. And now she can no longer be a princess. Finally, she starts to remove her memories the witch shook her staff. Magical waves enveloped and restrained the wolf who was now starting to lose consciousness. Crying out to her, hoping his cries could reach her, realizing he couldn't pull her away from the witch's magical power, he softly touched her face. The prince tells her that he is sorry for calling her a monster and a liar. She was honest about how she felt. Even though she will forget everything, he tells her that he will still remember all of it, and that is a promise. The wolf's consciousness kept fading. She couldn't hear his words until the very end. The wolf reflected one last time, thinking that at least she was able to apologize and wonders if he really forgives her. Wishing they could have made up and been friends again, she only wanted to be by his side. Then, everything went blank. We can now see the prince on the floor, who then gets up and his bandages fall off of his face. He was able to return back to the castle. We can see him get pampered by stewards. He then begins to look out at the night sky and sees the moon. Then, he is no longer in the room by the window, because he has left the castle and begins to traverse the woods. Seeing the raccoons in the forest, he rides on the back of a turtle to pick a hard-to-reach flower. He stumbles upon the nest of the frogs, and he even gets help from the goats all throughout his journey finding more and more flowers and hiding from large scary monsters. He continues to collect all the flowers he wasn't able to see before. He finally reaches his destination, the cliff that the wolf would sit atop and sing every night. Once upon a time, there was a kingdom surrounded by a deep, dark forest. The forest was a frightening place, filled with beasts and ruled by a powerful witch. Even during the day, the forest could be as dark as the winter night. Because of this, Humans rarely ventured inside, and as terrible as the forest was, a singing voice could always pierce the darkness when the moon shone. Well, it wasn't very good singing. The voice belonged to a large wolf, who would sit high atop a cliff every night and sing towards the moon, wondering why she was even singing, since she was terrible at it. But for some reason, whenever the wolf felt sad, she'd come to the cliff and sing. She tried to remember why her memories were very hazy, her heart feeling empty. The wolf's lonely song faded away into the darkness of the night, and when she finished, silence fell. The wolf stared into the night sky as still as a statue. Suddenly, sounds of grunting can be heard from close by. A strange human climbed the cliff and stood right in front of her. The wolf was surprised. Humans and wolves were mortal enemies, and the small human before her looked especially tender and soft. The wolf hadn't been particularly craving humans, but a midnight snack had just presented itself to her. So she raised a large paw, ready to kill the human and eat him. But just before she struck him, however, he caught her off guard and held out something. 
The wolf was suddenly overwhelmed by colors of every shade imaginable. For some reason, she was filled with nostalgia and a gentle, familiar scent. The scent of flowers. The human was holding a small bouquet. The human smiling says that they are all for her. The wolf looked puzzled. The prince tells her that he came to see her again and calls her princess. Suddenly, she was overcome with emotion. Tears welled up in her eyes and flowed down her face. Sadness and anguish burst from her heart. She didn't understand what he said to her, but she felt her lonely, empty heart being filled. The wolf lowered her paw and reached for the bouquet. She gently held the tiny flowers, which trembled ever so slightly, and she sat down on the spot. The human smiled and sat down next to the wolf. Her blurred vision made his smile seem to quiver. They cuddled under the moonlight as the wolf sang again. It wasn't very good singing, but the human listened to it joyfully nonetheless. After that night, the wolf sang not toward the moon, but for the human sitting next to her. And although the singing was not great, it was filled with warmth and honesty, and it brightened the dark forest forever and ever. And they lived happily ever after. Thank you so much for watching. I thought this game was pretty cute and I wanted to share the story with everyone. So if you enjoyed the video, give the video a like. And if you didn't like the video, give it a dislike. Let me know in the comments if you ever thought about playing this game or if you would like me to do another full story video on a game that you like. Subscribe to help the channel grow and I hope you have a great rest of your morning, day, or evening. And I will see you next time.